I wanted to create a pause moment in the Resetter podcast where I can bring to you some of the insights that I'm seeing watching so many women implement the tools that I share here on this podcast that I share in the book. Men, I'm not leaving you out of this conversation. Please hang in there as I'm gonna talk about hormones in general and how we can all start to bring hormones into the picture of health in everything we do. Dr. Mindy here. Your body is in a, in a war zone. This is different parts yes. of the brain get activated depending upon how stressed you are. When you look at it from that inflammatory. It's interesting. I mean, that has some merit to it for sure. And you can't control everything. Can't say. And what about the uh, a woman who is not pregnant, but she's aiming? Okay, Resetters, Dr. Mindy here, and I am bringing you my second solo episode that I've ever done, and so many of you loved the first one, um, and there's so much that I've learned putting Fast Like a Girl out into the world about hormonal health, around women's health. Uh, I've learned a ton from the guests I've had on in the last couple of months, so I wanted to create a pause moment in the Resetter podcast where I can bring to you some of the insights that I'm seeing watching so many women implement the tools that I share here on this podcast that I share in the book. Men, I'm not leaving you out of this conversation. Please hang in there as I'm going to talk about hormones in general and how we can all start to bring hormones into the picture of health in everything we do. So this is a completely unique episode. I'm excited to be here with you guys and let's just dive in. So here's where I want to start off with. Um, you know, when you write a book, and I've said this before, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes. When you write a book, it is one of the most um, soul sucking experiences for an author because you really get to sit with your thoughts. And like a podcast, when I'm talking to you all here, you know, the thoughts come and then I speak the thoughts. Same thing with videos when I do it, you know, on uh, like a YouTube video. But when you write a book, you it's literally you and the computer and, and you are contemplate contemplating at the deepest level what you think about the topic that you're writing on. So with Fast Like a Girl, I had spent over a decade really understanding the nuance of fasting and really understanding how to apply that to hormonal health for both men and women. And then I had been doing videos for so long, explaining all the nuggets that I'd learned from applying fasting to hormones and how it was actually playing out in the application of millions of women's lives. So I was really excited to get this book out into the world because I was already seeing what was working in action through my YouTube channel. But what has really struck me since then is that there's some really common denominators that are emerging from Fast Like a Girl hitting the world. And I think this is really important for us all to think about when it comes to women's health, when it comes to hormonal health. And when it comes to creating a new paradigm, a new healthcare paradigm that works for women, uh, and I will even say works for men as well, but the women are the ones that are suffering the most at the hands of this healthcare system. So here is what I've discovered in listening to you all, in reading your reviews, in watching the world take the principles of Fast Like a Girl um, and run with it. And here's what I, here's what I want you all to know. First. Women are so thirsty for this knowledge. So let me give you an example. If you have not heard the podcast interview that I did with Dr. Rangan Chatterjee, it is called uh, Feel Better, Live More. And he interviewed me um, on his podcast. And it was hands down one of the best interviews I've ever had on hormonal health um, ever. And it was almost a two hour interview. He was a phenomenal interviewer. Um, and that conversation has been hitting so many of you. Um, I, that, that It came out weeks ago and I'm still getting messages on all of my social media about how um, deeply women resonated 
with that conversation. So I want to start off by saying, if you have been thirsty for this knowledge, I want you to stay thirsty, stay hungry, understand that we have just cracked open a conversation. We are just fast like a girl. That's all it did. It started a conversation that we were all so desperate to have. And if you want to deepen that conversation, you can do that by continuing to talk to those in your life about what you've learned from the principles of the book, what you're learning in the application of the book, and what you learn from podcasts like the one interviews, like the one I did uh, with Dr. Chatterjee. If you haven't seen that podcast, I really recommend or listen to it. It's on both YouTube and on his channel. We'll put a link for it in here. But what I got and what was so amazing about Dr. Chatterjee was that he got what I was trying to do with Fast Like a Girl. And he got it from a male perspective. He got it as a husband. He got it as a father of girls. He got it as a as a health professional that cares about women's health. And he took the book and he started to create a larger conversation around that. So this is what I'm seeing on so many different platforms is that you all are dying to have this conversation. You're dying to understand hormones. So let's make sure we keep talking about it. And what that might look like for you would be you walk into your doctor's office and they give you a diagnosis and you say one of two things to your doctor. You might say, where do my hormones fit into this diagnosis and see what your doctor says. And then the second part of that conversation is you might ask, what lifestyle changes can I make to improve this situation? I think we've got to start to bring what we're learning to our doctors um, so that they understand what we need. I've had two other really interesting podcast interviews since the book came out. Um, One was on low carb MD. And then one was on Mark Hyman's uh, podcast, uh, Doctor's Pharmacy. And what I I learned from both of of those doctors was that doctors don't have enough time to teach lifestyle in their daily visit or in their visit with you. They, They don't have the time to give you all the tools to lifestyle. So many doctors are not leaving it out of the equation because they don't care they have five minutes to tell you what your diagnosis is, what, what, give it a fancy name and tell you the solution. And so we have to start demanding in those visits that we want to know lifestyle. Mark brought up an incredible point to me. And he, he, you know, he was like, this is why I don't agree a hundred percent with the healthcare system is because they never bring lifestyle uh, modalities into the picture. And he even went on to say that he strongly is in alignment with Fast Like a Girl and what I taught in there because we need to teach lifestyle different to women. So all of this is incredibly encouraging. And I I really want to point out that those of you that have started book studies with it, those of you that are just starting to understand what a hormonal life would lifestyle would look like, keep at it. Keep sharing what you're learning. Keep the conversation going. I promise you, Fast Like a Girl was just there to spark the conversation, to start the foundational understanding. Um, Now it's our job to keep it going, to keep learning, to keep applying the principles. And And I hope you all are hearing here on the Resetter podcast that I continue Um, to bring it back to all those teachings in Fast Like a Girl. Every person I'm interviewing, I'm trying to bring those teachings back into those interviews so that you start over time to see how to apply this to your life. So that's been my, my first takeaway is that women, men, doctors are so thirsty to understand how a lifestyle matches their hormonal balance. And that's key. That's amazing. And, and it's it, honestly, I've been in healthcare for, for over 25 years. This is the most hope that I've had in a really long time watching how the world has grabbed on to fast like a girl. People, doctors want change. So let's, we got to keep the conversation going so they understand what the change should look like. So that would be the, one of the first things. The second thing that I saw since fast like a girl has come out is that all kinds of hormonal problems can be helped 
when you just bring a woman back into eating and fasting for her hormonal rhythm. Doesn't matter if she's 25 or 65. If you can teach a woman how to live a life that works with estrogen, works with testosterone, works with progesterone, now you start to see a ton of symptoms change and a ton of conditions change. This is what I saw clinically in my practice. This is what I saw on all my social media. And this is what I'm now seeing in the millions of women that have poured onto my platforms um, over the last couple of months and have shared their experience. So, you know, a lot of the questions I get are, well, how do I fast like a girl around PCOS? How do I fast like a girl around thyroid health? How do I fast like a girl around uh, infertility? And what I want you to know is that the principles of the book will work for all of those things. Here's the challenge. You've got to find your rhythm with it and what is going to work best for you. So even though we're all living in feminine bodies, there is a lot like your microbiome and my microbiome are completely different. And our genetics are obviously different, but they're pretty pretty similar, believe it or not. And our hormonal needs are are absolutely the same, except we have different levels of hormonal depletion. So this conversation is a hard one to start, let me tell you, because it it's not as simple as me saying, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. It's really about you getting to understand your hormones and what where they're at. So let me give you a couple of insights that might be helpful. First is I always say, let's start with the free path to get to know your hormones. The first thing you'll hear me say a lot is how important it is that we know the personalities of these hormones. So let me just give you a nutshell. What are the personalities of the hormones? So estrogen is your extrovert. She is the one that wants to go out and party. She wants to verbally process everything. She has a lot of mental clarity. She wants always to go out on an adventure. She is absolutely the extrovert of the hormonal bunch. She also doesn't get bothered by much. So she's okay if you bring cortisol up. So if you want to go run a marathon, you want to do a longer fast, you want to you want to uh, work extra hard, you want to skimp on sleep, estrogen's going to probably be okay. And for a cycling woman, estrogen is coming in from day 1 to day 10 and day 16 to day 19. So those are your power moments. That's why I called it the power phases in the book because those are the moments you get to power up on whatever tool you want. Um, you also are more stress resilient during that time. Uh, remember, this is a, in, in, on that point. Remember, menopausal women, as we lose estrogen, we become less stress resilient. I can tell you, as a 53 year old woman, I'm really watching my brain and how it's reacting to stress differently with less estrogen in it. So, if you find yourself being bothered by things, understand that it could be a factor of estrogen, and that's okay. That's okay. We don't, as women, I can tell you, like, I, I think we can accomplish anything. I think we are so ridiculously powerful. And in that, we're also needing more, more nurturing of ourselves. We need more recovery. We aren't like on our A game every single month of our cycle because our hormones have such dramatic differences and needs and they swing in such unique ways. So if we're looking at the that progesterone and we're looking at her personality, that's her. She can handle a lot. Now, from a lifestyle perspective, what estrogen wants you to do is to keep carbs down, wants you to keep insulin down. Um, and this is why fasting and keto works so well to keep estrogen at its best. So a lot of the comments that I'm seeing on Amazon in the reviews that have just uh, bring me to tears are the number of women that are getting pregnant using being able to overcome infertility using the fast like a girl cycle and the fasting cycle in there. And the reason for that is what I'm showing is a lifestyle that works best for estrogen. And once you bring estrogen back into balance, 
um, so much of your hormone, hormonal system will work. And we live in a time where we have so many synthetic estrogens out there. And so the toxic estrogens are, th are, are throwing off the good estrogens and your cells can't use synthetic estrogens. They're called estrogen mimickers, but they're of no use to your cells. So when you fast like a girl, you, br you bring what we call the 2-OH estrogen metabolite. You start to bring that back into balance and that's the protective estrogen. That's why we are seeing women being able to get pregnant once they start to learn when to go keto and when to go longer fast. But we're also seeing it in the menopausal women, you know, with the menopausal women, if you've had hot flashes, that's estrogen on a wild ride. And you, you often are dealing with the estrogen um, disruptors that are out there. So fasting like a girl, even if you don't have a cycle, doing the 30 day fasting reset is really helping to overcome hot flashes. And um, if you've heard me on any of my podcasts lately, or I've been ranting about this in my Reset Academy, um, I, the article that came out in the New York Times uh, about a month ago, ha asking us all to relook at HRT for women, as eye-opening as it was, didn't have all the right information in it. This is a, a menopausal woman's journey is, is not as simple as a discussion of HRT or no HRT. It's it, it taking bioidenticals, doing HRT is a personal preference, but you're still going to have to work on your lifestyle. And I'll talk about the lifestyle here in a moment that a, that a menopausal woman should have. And you're still going to need to mind what estrogen wants. And even if you're bringing her in from an exogenous source, you're still going to have to work on your liver. And you can do that because the liver breaks down estrogen. You can do that by, you know, minimizing your alcohol intake, uh, eating more bitter foods, looking at certain medications like acetaminophen, which is Tylenol that's super destructive to the liver, uh, dealing with, with ang resentment and anger, which is also an emotion held in the liver. You're still going to have to love on that liver for her to be able to break down the exogenous estrogen that comes in from uh, a, a source like a bioidentical or HRT. And then we also know you have the whole microbiome of your gut. We still need to make sure that we're minding the strobilome, which is the set of bacteria that break estrogen down. So you're still going to have to do the three P's that I talk about in the book, the polyphenol and the probiotic and the prebiotic uh, uh, foods so that you can take the estrogen that you're getting from the outside and actually be able to use it. So that's what estrogen wants. The lifestyle she wants you to live is more vegetables, easy, easier on the liver, more bitter foods, less glucose, less insulin, more fasting. That's estrogen. Now, progesterone, I've mentioned, is completely on the opposite end of the spectrum. She is, she's, she's not that way. She wants you to bring glucose up. This is why you're more hungry the week before your period. This is why even in menopause, you know, I'm six months into my menopausal transition. And I can tell you that um, there are some days that I'm like, wow, am I hungry? And I translate that into, okay, I must need more progesterone. Let me eat more carbs. Let me fast less. How can I bring my glucose up? So that is progesterone's personality is she wants to calm you. She actually wants you to go more inner. We're really intuitive. If you have a cycle, we're very intuitive that week before our period. So that's progesterone. She, she makes us want to go within, which is actually if you, a beautiful thing. If you stop and you think about it, because when we actually bleed there, we're not just shedding blood, but you're, you're shedding old cells, you're sh shedding toxins. You can even shed thought patterns that no longer serve you. So I, I would love to see a world where the week before our cycle, we actually go within and we say, okay, when my cycle starts again, what am I, what do I want to let go of? And if we really got in touch with that, bringing the glucose up, nurturing ourselves, slowing our life down, then I don't think we would have PMDD. There wouldn't even be that diagnosis of uh, this premenstrual disorder. Premenstrual disorder means you just lived out of alignment with your hormones and you're suffering because of it. But to live in alignment with progesterone means you're going to need to fast less. You're going to need to exercise less. You're going to need to bring glucose up. You're going to need to go within and nurture yourself and, and get ready for what you want to let go of when you start to bleed.
And progesterone does that by making you crave carbs. She wants higher carb content. She, she wants you to not be fasting. She wants you to slow down. So pushing through your workouts during this time, pushing through life during this time is, is going to create a hormonal mess for you. My postmenopausal women, again, you're going to notice this when anxiety goes up. You're going to notice this when hunger goes up, when carb cravings go up. That's progesterone knocking on the door saying, hey, I need a little support here. How can you help me? Now, testosterone, we get the most, and I've been having a lot of fun talking about this out in the, in the world. We get the most amount of testosterone at ovulation. So that there's a reason for that. And it's not just libido. It's not just reproduce, um, which at the core of a female body, whether you like it or not, we our bodies are made to reproduce. And so testosterone comes in from day 10 to day 15 to not only increase our libido. So you will probably notice that your sex drive goes up during that time, but our motivation and um, will also for new projects will go up. And um, our, uh, our desire to make changes in our life often will go up. And so it's an incredible time uh, during ovulation to start a new creative project, to do something that is going to move your, your, health, your life forward in a new direction. Change will do really well. You want to change, change at that time because you have all those hormones there to protect you and assist you through that change. And that's really what testosterone does. Now, testosterone doesn't really, there, there's not like testosterone controls your hunger or Dr. Carrie Jones and I've debated this over and over again. She strongly believes that there's no such thing as eating for testosterone. Although we know you need zinc and there are foods that are high in zinc like oysters. I always think that it's so interesting that we used to think, you know, we call oysters an aphrodisiac, but then we, if we break that down, why? It's because it's got a, one of the highest amounts of zinc in it. And so that is actually fueling testosterone, which is fueling libido. So we're going to like the root cause of what testosterone needs. So testosterone also really thrives with fasting. So, um, but if during ovulation, because you have those other hormones there, I want to make sure that you're not fasting longer than 15 hours. So, but a 15 hour fast will help upregulate testosterone. The other thing about testosterone, and I talked a little bit about it in this book, Um, I talked about it um, a a lot in the menopause reset, which will be coming back out, a revised vision, I'll talk about that in a minute, will be coming out um, in June, Um, is that if you're under a tremendous amount of stress, you overutilize uh, your body's requirement for a steroid called DHEA. And DHEA, you need to make cortisol, progesterone, and testosterone. So if you're always stressed out, always asking your body to make uh, cortisol, what will end up happening is you won't have a left, enough left over for progesterone and testosterone. So a lot of you will do well supplementing with DHEA so you can build back up the reserves of those other two hormones. Um, and really a Dutch test is the best way to know your DHEA numbers. That's where I would start because if you don't need DHEA, um, then it can actually overstimulate your androgen system. So there's a fine balance there. But stress is a big part when it comes to both progesterone and testosterone, whereas estrogen is very resilient and forgiving. So those are the personalities um, for the menopausal women or the women that are younger that don't have a cycle. Then, you know, what do you do? When, I, when you hear me say, get to know the personalities, those are the ones I just told you. So that you can start to read where you are in your, your hormonal needs. And this is what I do, at, you know, at, at 53 and six months without a cycle, I'm all, every day, you know, is anxiety up? Okay, I need to work on progesterone. Do I need more motivation um, and libido? Okay, what do I need to do for, to get testosterone up? Is my brain not handling stress very well? Am I am I really uh, uh, acutely agitated easily? Um, is my cognition down? Then I need to look at estrogen. And so every day I'm doing this evaluation. So I hope that helps. Let me know if that nuance to what I wrote in Fast Like a Girl helps you. Because um, I know a lot of the postmenopausal women asked me questions once the book came out. Um, and I've got more menopausal books coming from you, for you women. So sit tight. And, um, but I wanted to, to, to elaborate on um, that conversation. So you all had it. Okay. 
The next thing I want to talk about is what do you do after you've got the concepts of fast like a girl? And um, this is where the menopause reset really comes into play. That book was one that I wrote to talk about the lifestyle change that should happen after 40. Now, I realize that a lot of you listening might be in your 30s, maybe even in your 20s. But I want you to listen to these five steps that I want you to, to implement um, after 40, the steps that need to change, because what we're starting to see is because the modern world is so filled with toxins, so filled with stressors, that perimenopause, they believe, is now happening at 35. So when we start to see dramatic hormonal imbalances, specifically in the direction of depletion, so like PCOS is too much estrogen or too much testosterone, uh, perimenopause, infertility, these are not enough um, of certain hormones. So when we start to see that there's these dramatic depletion and change in hormones, our lifestyle has to change. And here are the five steps I want you to think about. First, I just talked about it, fasting. We need to learn how to pull out the different fasting lengths. Um, there's the six different fasts I lay out in Fast Like a Girl. Practice them all. I, I continue to say they're like a Swiss, Swiss army knife. Um, and sometimes you pull out the big knife. Sometimes you pull out the tweezers. Sometimes you pull out the corkscrew. You get to decide which of those six you're going to pull out according to what you're trying to heal. Are you? Did you just go on antibiotics? Okay, well, then you're going to need to work on healing the gut little more 24 hours. Um, are you worried about your toxic load? Um, do you feel like your, your, your brain is aging quickly? Let's go into autophagy and start to clean up some of the neurons in the brain and get rid of some of the senescent cells, the rogue cells, the zombie cells that are that no longer serve you. If you are not happy, you're having some mental health issues, how about we throw a 48 hour fast in so we can start to reset the dopamine system. If you're stuck with weight loss, why don't you throw a 36 hour fast in so we can unstick your weight? So when you go to build your fasting lifestyle, some of the longer fasts, you're not going to use them all the time. You're going to throw them out as healing tools to reset certain parts of your body. So the first step when we look at what lifestyle needs to change is that women need to step in and look at how to use those different length fasts according to their therapeutic um, value. Okay, second one is we need to cycle carbs. And uh, again, this is, I've already said this, this is a fast like a girl. I show you how to cycle high carb and low carb according to your menstrual cycle. If you're in your perimenopausal years, um, get to, you know, get to that ebb and flow. If you have a regular cycle, if you don't have a regular cycle, um, you're going 60 days, 120 days, then you may need to just read the personalities. Like one day you're not hungry. Okay, great. You can fast a little longer. Next day you are starving and it's nine o'clock in the morning. That's not time to, to push through the fast. Let's go into more high carb for progesterone. So that's how I use that. And, and again, if you're, if you're needing more help with this, this is a lot of what we do in the Reset Academy is teach, have conversations like this so that we can teach women how to ebb and flow with their carb load. So that's really step number two. Um, I want to throw one other thing that I, that I, if I could go back in and write a little bit more in the Fast Like, in Fast like a Girl, here's what I would say is we, we do need to look at thyroid. And the thing about the thyroid is that it needs enough calories. And I don't talk about calories a lot because I want to break apart this calorie obsession that we've had as women. But what that means for you is when you go low carb, I want to make sure you're still getting enough calories. You should be getting over uh, like somewhere around 1,200 to 1,500 calories every single day for thyroid health. So those of you who've been fasting, maybe saw your thyroid have an adverse reaction. When you're eating, make sure you're having enough calories and especially on those low carb days. So that's that's number two lifestyle change. First is you're going to vary your fasts, figure out those six, what works best for you. The second is you're going to work on cycling high carb, low carb, and understanding what that rhythm looks like for you. Third one is your microbiome. We don't talk about this enough. The microbiome controls almost every aspect of our health. So I want to use the example of serotonin. So something that happens to women after 40 is that as estrogen goes down, estrogen is a precursor to dopamine and serotonin. 
So when you start to lose estrogen, you lose a key fuel source for serotonin. What that means for you is that you might be fine that you're just not as happy as you used to be. You're not, you're not, you don't have the joy that you used to have. So if you also have been on birth control for decades, you've been on multiple rounds of antibiotics, you've used steroids a time or two, your microbiome might be decimated. It is not, does not have the diversity that it needs to have. So you're not having the hormonal stimulation of serotonin and your microbiome isn't in a place to make serotonin. So therefore you're ending up in a depressed state. Nothing is making you happy. So the third change that needs to happen for women over 40 is that we've got to start to bring in the polyphenol, the probiotic and the prebiotic foods. I spoke of it in the menopause reset. I also speak of it in fast like a girl really leaning into the fibery foods that are going to help promote the growth of your digestive system. So make sure you're eating enough vegetables, bottom line, um, and specifically ones that are um, feeding those microbes, but also looking at some of the fermented foods. I saw a lot of comments from you all that as you brought fermented foods back into your life, you started to lose weight. Well, that makes sense because you healed your gut and you have a neuronal connection from the gut or a nervous system connection from the gut to the liver. And so as the gut health improves, liver health improves. And what we know from that is the liver is your fat burning organ. It's what's going to help you make ketones. Um, it helps you make cholesterol, the good cholesterol. So you can't look at the liver without looking at repairing the gut. So make sure that you're doing that. That's the third step. Um, the fourth step step of uh, that women should look at after 40 is really making sure that their toxic loads are at a minimal. So this is where look at your beauty products, look at your household cleaners, um, stop wearing your favorite perfume that might be high in phthalates, move to essential oils. If there ever was a time to address toxins, it's after 40. I mean, you can do it before. I highly recommend it, especially women that are trying to get pregnant. Remember that you're going to pass on your toxic load to your child. So I always think detox is important anytime, but especially I want to make sure that we are bringing our toxic load down as we move into the perimenopause and menopause years. Understanding how to detox is critically important. If there ever was a time to detox, it would be in your 40s. So, um, and if you need more information on detox, let me know. I'm working to bring more experts on. Um, I can do more videos in detox. So just leave me a comment or a review um, with this podcast. I do read my reviews. Um, so if you want to learn something more, put it in those comments. Okay, so number four is detox. And the fifth lifestyle change that we need to consider after 40 is uh, what, what Libby Weaver calls the rushing woman syndrome. So this is the overscheduled, um, overwhelmed nervous system. You, as you age, it becomes more and more important that you learn how to go into times of fight or flight where there's stress and how to go into times where you relax. If you, if you are sitting on the couch and your brain is saying, screaming at you saying, get up, get up, get up, um, you're, you're not in a balanced nervous system. If you're having trouble sleeping, you're not in a balanced nervous system. So learning how to go in and out of these two states is massively important. In the menopause reset, um, which will come back out, it's a revised ed edition, will come back out in June. I have a whole chapter, not only on rushing woman syndrome, but I added a new chapter. So if those of you that have read the menopause reset, I added a new chapter to it. Um, and that chapter is on sleep. So, and I put my favorite sleep ha hacks, I give you a whole different perspective of sleep. So I'm really excited um, to add that back in. So those of you that um, have bought the menopause reset in the past, this one has new information. So I want to make sure that you get that as well. So those are the five lifestyle changes that really need to change after 40. We got to look at varying our fast and even starting fasting. We've got to look at carb cycling in and out. We've got to look at, at feeding constantly and loving on our microbiome, which also includes our liver. 
we got to look at our toxic loads and studying the art of detoxing. And we've got to look, look at how we start to manage stress or what I call practicing parasympathetic, really working on those moments where our energy uh, uh, can be a little bit lower. We're not constantly doing over and over again. And what I found when I put the menopause reset out a couple of years ago is that when women did that, hot flashes went away, women started losing weight, moods improved, sleep improved. It was pretty dramatic. So um, between Fast Like a Girl and uh, the menopause reset, you've got two really good tools now for lifestyle around hormonal health. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I have gone into contract on my next book with Hay House, um, and it will be on the lifestyle tools that women need to keep their moods and their brain um, in a happy place as we move through um, the perimenopause and menopausal years. Um, There's more to this conversation when it comes to mental health that I want to have. And in the next book, we will have that. And then you literally will have a trilogy um, of books that women can use specifically 35 and older to be able to bring a lifestyle together that is going to help her balance her hormones. So I, I can, I'm in the process of writing that now, lots of research going into it. I, I can't wait to get it to you. Uh, it'll come out October, 2024. So we got a little bit of time. Um, stay tuned to the resetter podcast because I'm um, interviewing. You'll see that there's a common theme here. I, there's a lot more emphasis on mental health this season because of the research I'm doing for the next book. So um, if you're into mindset and mental health, this is the season for you on the Resetter podcast. So that that is the formula that what I wanted to do with this solo episode is really help you look at how do you take the information from Fast Like a Girl? How do you take the information from the menopause reset and how do you apply it to your life? Um, I have said this before that when I sit down to do a video or I sit down to write a book, my biggest fear is that we start to look at these uh, teachings as pieces and that all of a sudden people will rush off and start, you know, thinking that the solution to estrogen is ketones and they start doing exogenous ketones or um, they think that, um, oh, if I need to um, bring in more collagen I, if to, because I don't have enough estrogen, then it's the solution is collagen powder. These are all great solutions, but they have to have a formula to be able to sit in. And that's what I'm here to teach you. Um, I really want to, to bring this last concept home, which is I'm not giving you fish. I'm teaching you to fish. And when you start, those of you, I see so many of you that are listening to the podcast every week. I've, I've heard from so many of you that can't wait for Monday's episode. And what I, what I'm trying to do is link them all. I'm trying to bring on experts that help you learn how to fish. Um, and in the intros of each ec- um, episode, I am explaining what I thought you, the nuggets were that you were going to want to get out of that, um, that conversation and all of these episodes linked together. So with enough time, with enough repetition, you'll start to understand the formula for building a lifestyle that matches your hormonal needs. That is my mission. So I'm so excited to bring it all to you. I, again, really appreciate the kind comments that I've received. Thank you to those of you that are sharing the book out in the world. I'm doing this podcast right now at the end of March, and the book came out December 27th, and it's still trending in the top 100 of, of books um, on, on Amazon, which is crazy. It's crazy. So you guys have, thank you so much. The Menopause Reset, I'm so excited. If you haven't read it, you can pre-order it now. It has the new sleep chapter. I'm going back into the studio to read it again, the whole book. Um, so it will have an audio piece to it. It will be on ebook um, and that will be out in June. So you can pre-order it now. Would you be great? I just want to mention that the pre-orders matter to the bookstores. When they see a large amount of pre-orders, they know to carry more of those books. So pre-orders are really important. So if you are moved to pre-order the menopause reset, I would appreciate that. So, okay. With that, you all, you know that I'm going to say, I hope it helps because that's the way I feel is that I'm here to provide you information that you might not be hearing but I do want to end on this. And that is you're the hero. You are the hero of your own health story. 
So if you're not feeling like your own hero, just keep learning, keep listening to what I'm teaching you, keep applying, keep be will, being w- willing to fail at, at your health endeavors and pick yourself back up again. Be willing to do hard things. We as, as women can come together and talk about a hormonal lifestyle that serves us all. And in that, we all win. So if this resonated with you, please share it with a, with a friend, create community, go, go f- build community around you because that's the highest level of oxytocin you can get. And as you know, oxytocin balances all hormones out.